Uphold the conviction. Prosecutors tell judge to keep Cartel in prison as evidence was enough to lock him away. Wagwan viewers and subscribers, we come to you with another dancehall update. Today, the prosecutors were in court tackling the arguments made by the appellant's lawyers. And as I said before, that's their job to go against the defendant. And remember the chop up chop up text from Vibes Cartel's phone that they have as evidence. Well, they also have a next text message from Sean Stam's phone. We are going to get to that down in the video. So the lawyer for Vibes Cartel, Sean Stam, Kyra and Anje argued last week that they were tried against a contaminated and tainted jury. So the prosecutor fired back in defense of the judge and said this. Prosecutors told the court today that what the trial judge had before him was merely an allegation. That allegation would need an inquiry. Jeremy Taylor argued that there were limits to the type of inquiry that the trial judge could have conducted. In fact, Mr. Taylor said an inquiry would mean the rule of secrecy would be breached. That's because jurors would be questioned about what they said and heard while in the jury room. This is from Senior Deputy Director of Prosecutions, Jeremy Taylor. Him slick with him words and him very good at him job. Because the judge knew of the contaminated jury and still let it slide, Jeremy Taylor, in defense of the judge, said that when it was brought to the attention of the judge, it was merely an allegation and that allegation would need an inquiry and that inquiry would break the jury rule of secrecy. That is a very good response and while it makes sense, it still doesn't make no sense. You have to have some rules in place that can breach other rules if it is broken or something goes horribly wrong. Like hypothetically speaking, what if one of the jurors attack a next juror which result in that juror getting hurt? Would the same rule of secrecy be applied? What if a juror have a gun upon him in the jury room? Would that same rule apply? The rule of secrecy? Those are questions me need for answer. Then again, me I just a regular youth with a stuffy nose and give him opinion upon the internet. For the prosecution, the retired High Court Judge Justice Lennox Campbell recognized his limits. Mr. Taylor said failure to discharge the jury because of the bribery allegation cannot amount to a miscarriage of justice. The prosecutors argued that the trial judge did the right thing by not discharging the jury. That can amount to miscarriage of justice. One bad apple can spoil the rest. Even if some of the jurors had vibes cartel as innocent and wanted to come with a not guilty verdict, that one juror that tried to bribe them in coming with that not guilty verdict can change their minds into coming with a guilty verdict. Just the thought of someone bribing you with money can make you change your mind. For example, if you have a friend and you see him as faithful, you and him par, but him girlfriend see him as a cheater, but then one day him come to you and offer you money to tell him girlfriend say him faithful, that I got just automatically make you feel like say him is a cheater for true. So of course that is miscarriage of justice. Just the fact that one man is bribing the jury will make the rest of jurors think that cartel, a wealthy man, is paying them to come with a not guilty verdict. Meaning he must be guilty. Lawyers for the appellants last week argued that there was undue pressure on the jurors to deliver a verdict. The jury was sent to deliberate. 18 minutes to 4 p.m. on Thursday, March 13, 2014. The lawyers for the appellants argued that the review of the evidence was impossible to take place at that time. Evidence of over 20 witnesses, five unsworn statements, 27 exhibits, and two weeks of summation. Today, the prosecutors told the court that it does not follow that because the jury was retired after 3 p.m. means there was any undue pressure. Jeremy Taylor maintained that there was no evidence that the verdict was rushed. So this is a popular response for the prosecutors when them can't really answer a question. Either them say there is no evidence for that claim or there is no direct evidence for that claim. So if there is so much things to review, the jury could do that in that short amount of time. So either them review it for real or them just judge it from the fact that hey this is cartel and we're seeing it in the media that he is guilty and plus there is a juror bribing us to say that he is not guilty so he must be guilty and them just pass them verdict simple as that without doing a proper review of the two week summation the 27 exhibits the five answer statements etc etc Another issue is the credibility and consistency of Lamar Chow's evidence. Chow was the Crown's main witness. According to the prosecution, the trial judge told the jury how to deal with the discrepancies in Chow's evidence, especially as it relates to the time he arrived at Swallowfield Avenue.
As it relates to the chop up chop up text message, the prosecution insisted that it showed Cartel's state of mind. In fact, the prosecution went further and asked the appeal court to treat that specific text as an admission of murder. After this, I will be getting to Sean Storm's text. No vibes Cartel text. Yeah, I have a lot of things to say about this. Between me and you, a chapu chapu the boy is at fine fine and dash him away now. As long as you live, them can never find him again. Now, for those who know Vibes Cartel, and for those who know about texting, between me and you, that means between you and the recipient where you send the text to, right? Who sends a text and says, between me and you? Yeah, if you meet someone in person, you can tell them, say, hey, keep this between me and you, you know. But in a text, of course, the text are going to be between you and the person. You don't have to say it again in the text. And plus, Vibes Cartel not talk like that. More and more believe a text if it did say, big woman thing in a dog. A chapu chapu lizard, fine, fine, fine. Not a text message was say, between me and you. It just don't make no sense. From you send a text to a person, it's already between you and them. You and the recipient. And why? If the voice notes allegedly of Vibes Cartel a speak in codes, a call guns, shoes, etc. It a speak in codes. Why him a go call lizard name in a the text? That just do add up neither. And might be a me alone but I just not see that as add up. A man will call gun shoes and him a do this and him a do that over the phone. But then in a text him call out the name, him call how him do the act, him, him a say everything in a the text. But he must speak in codes in a device note. And from the police, them have the phone and them keep it charged and not secured. And them are make phone call. Who could tell what else them do with the phone? As for Sean Campbell, the prosecution is sticking to the argument that he was part of a common design, which essentially means that he was part of a plan and actively participated in Lizard's murder. Prosecutors argued that Campbell took Lizard to Swallowfield. They further argued that Campbell sent a text message saying, People are dead. Jeremy Taylor told the court that this is evidence of foresight. According to the prosecution, he knew what was going to happen to Clive Lizard Williams. Mr. Taylor said even though he wasn't there when the crime was committed, he cannot be excluded. Tomorrow is the day when the liars for the appellants would answer. But for Sean Storm now, people are dead. Mood want to know when this text was sent, if it was on the day, if it was before or after. Because if it is an old message, then it could be a musical clash between two artists or if it was after then it wouldn't even make no sense and if it was on the day of lizard's murder then we would want to know what time to see if it correlates with the time that the witness says because this is the thing you know me believe if it was any other normal person they wouldn't walk free long time they wouldn't go to trial win the case go home but just because this is two entertainers vibes cartel being the most influential it aga harder for them Especially because the media paint a bad image on them. Even high profile persons in the police force saying Vibes Cartel commit over 100 murders. Those things alone get in the minds of people. It has a far reaching effect than when a normal person like me would and say it. So imagine a top police officer slandering your name like that. People are going to believe. And that's why I said this was strategically done. They knew what they were doing from the get-go. So if them can get in at the minds of the people, I those same normal persons are going to get called up for jury duty. Today, prosecutors insisted that even if there is merit in the arguments raised by the appellant's attorneys, the jury would still have come back with a guilty verdict given the evidence against the men. Not given the evidence of the men, given of how the top people in society slander the artist's name. Me can get called up for jury duty and I'm sure a lot of my subscribers them too from what have the legal qualifications but with the media slandering Vibes Cartel name like that if them call me up for jury duty even when the evidence is clear that it is tampered with or the evidence don't sound credible or the main witness don't sound credible I still have to believe and say hey but this top police officer did I say Vibes Cartel kill over 100 people and I just have to see Vibes Cartel as guilty and me I go say yo guilty without even looking into the evidence that's how brainwashed the people are and a lot of people still believe that once they get charged 
you're guilty. Once police lock you up or call your name, you're guilty. Even if there is no evidence, you're guilty. From your come on the news and them ears say, you do this or you do that and the police them hold you on the scene. Even when there is no evidence, the jury still are going to say, you're guilty. The people them still are going to say, you're guilty. That's just it. Because your name is already out there. That's just what me think. I uh, people who just tell me what they think though leave it in the comment section. Sorry if that video here bad quality or whatever. Um my voice kinda hoarse up and thing, yeah. My sick out so I wish me get well soon or something. <laughs> I don't know the thing, I don't know nice like how bingo man wicked. Man tough.